Okay, this one's going to be quick. Um, basically, some of my literature on JB2000s. Um, Black Cat Wawasi Electronics, Black Cat made about seven versions of the JB2000 that I know about. Uh, and all the Black Cats that I know of that had three 500Zs in them a pair, whether they had the driver or not, and whether they had uh, 10 meters or 10 through 80 meters or 6 meters, were all called JB2000s. And what came after that was what designated which version of the JB2000 you had. So anyway, um, I'll run through it quick. This picked up some of the literature I had and went through some of the pages. Um, that one there is a price list. Wish I could have found more ads, but I don't know where I put my ads. These are basically from manuals and schematics. But anyway, I got a price list of a JB2000 1080. That's what they called it in the price list, right? Of amplifiers, mobiles. And somebody asked me about information on JB1s on Facebook. So uh, all I got is this price list here, which is uh, January uh, 76. And on the JB1, I got this sheet here. I guess the guy picked up a JB1 and... Um, you know, was asking if anybody information, you know, had it. And a lot of people on Facebook said, hey, that's a tube amplifier. It's like, nope. This is the only Black Hat Wawasi transistor amplifier that I know of that they made. You know, um, as far as mobiles, what I know of, they made the um, JB1, which is rare and hard to find, transistor, one pill. Then they made the JV75 mobile uh, one tube uh, 8417 or 7581 family. They made the JB200 aka JB76 mobile uh, two tube with two 8417s. And that's all I know of what they made mobiles. Um, bases they made, of course, the JB12s, JB150s, JB200 base and mobile aka. Uh, JB76. I don't know why they called the uh, 200 and then they went to 76, but anyway. And then they made a uh, different version as the JB2000. You know, some 6 meters, most 10, 11 meters, and then 10 through 80 meters. And with driver and without driver. Um, and they made also a rare uh, Black Cat JB440. I've had a couple of those over the years. Wish I wouldn't have sold them, but. You know, when somebody offers you big money and you got a uh, rafters are full, sometimes you just take the money and run. But then, of course, later you regret it. And the JB440 was a four, um, well, not really sweep tubes, but 7581s the same. No, actually, they use 6550s, which is a bigger audio tube than the um, 7581-8417 tube. Um, it had four of them in it. And with the 440, some of them had drivers, just like the JB2000. Some of them had drivers, some of them did not. And I've seen a couple of 440s that were on 220. I thought that's kind of unusual for um, running 220 for, you know, four basic um, audio tubes, them 6550s in it. But then again, Black Cat, they put it together with whatever they had, you know, laying around. And... One of the guys on YouTube here said that um, um, Black Cat made the schematics extremely difficult to decipher. They put a lot of junk in it and, and crazy stuff because they didn't want people uh, copying them. And also, another reason for that, and I got this from Kenny from Black Cat itself. You know, I was a nobody, but I've always been electronically and uh, intellectually curious and I said many times I'm partly autistic and I'm very curious about how things work and I was down there as a teen because I was about 17 and I had a Palomar 300A that was um, not stable and it was a um, CB buddy of mine much older than me um, you know his name was Mule Skinner and he had a JB2000 uh, I don't even remember which model, whether you had the driver or the CB version or 10 through 80. I think it was the one with the driver. It was um, bad. I think it had, the tubes weren't lighting up. 
and uh, we drove down there in his Cadillac and uh, down to Indiana and uh, you know talked to Kenny and they had an ARF 2000 down there for a while that um, uh, really rare CB radio and I was like look at that and I was like I'm gonna have one of them in my lifetime and I've had a few of them but anyway um, one of the things he's did with my buddy Mule Skinner's JB 2000's was they soldered the two pins to the sockets and I thought that was really weird at the time you know but again who am I you know I'm a 17 year old know nothing kid at the time and uh you know down there with black hat with the people who build them and and even with them being soldered in something happened with one of the tubes where it wasn't lighting and they ended up replacing both the tubes and the sockets they didn't try to unsolder them they uh, took out the whole socket put in new sockets put in new tubes and soldered the um, tubes right to the sockets back then at black hat that's the first time i ever saw that and I recently saw uh, on one of the ham sites on the internet where you know the, somebody had one with the sockets soldered in and the hams were going crazy like no 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 never you know I don't know who's right or who's wrong on that whether that's a good idea or not but I do know for a fact because I've seen it with my own eyes that Black Cat themselves sometimes soldered the um, 3500Z pins right to the socket. But anyway, I'm getting off track and getting long winded. Didn't mean to. Um, this one's a JB2000 1080 with no other designation on it, right? And you can look at it and see that that's different. That looks like a CB version with no band switch and no tune and load. Here we have a JB2000E which is the last one that I know of um, and this one has the uh, band switch and the tune and low you know knobs and all that on it right um, and as far as I know none of the 1080s 10 through 80 meters had a driver tube and then over here this is just a schematic the top of it a JB, the JB2000E again and then 10 through 80 meter right February 75 and then over here is one of the schematics for a JB 2000 D 10 through 11 meter uh, February 74 and I missed the six right where are you there he is uh, JB 2006 um, six meter October 76 and here's a manual I got offline a long long time ago um, back before you can find these and back before um, I got my collection of them um, over the years but uh, another uh, this was a copy that people used to make that company there don't know if they still in business or not but anyway it was hard to find and I saw that I jumped on it uh, Black Hat or JB 2000 1080 you know I probably seen or I probably seen you know 40 of them over the years I probably worked on 20 of them over the years and every black cat I've seen or JB2000 um, with 3500Z's is always called a JB2000 it's just what it does is afterwards you know whether it's a JB2000 1080 or a JB2000 1011 or a JB2006 and you know there are even different variations of those I have seen but um, that's all I have seen I've never heard of one called a JB 1080 and I've never seen a schematics of one either and also I'm just gonna do this JB 1 again for the uh, guy that was looking for information for the JB 1 this is all I got I got no schematics or nothing else on this thing JB1 rare um, one peel transistorized um, mobile amplifier. He was asking, "What's it worth?" Too, and I said, "Well, you know, one peel probably does about 75 watts. Does it even say what it does here? Yeah, three S units, but 
3S units. What did they sell this as? A receipt booster? <laughs> yeah, must have. See, it doesn't say that it does watch. They say it's a um, 3S unit. So they probably marketed this thing as... Yeah, there it is. Just saw that. Market this thing as a receive booster. Hey, you had to do what you had to do back in the day, right? All right. That's all I got on the JB1. And my thoughts on the um, Black Cat JB2000s. All right. Bye.